Welcome back to Swans Cast, everyone. Um, into an international break now, so we're going to wrap up the last week of action. So I'm joined by Lee and Ali today. So welcome, lads. Hello. Um, so how's your week been then, Lee? What have you been up to? Done much interesting stuff this week? Is that me? Because my headphones went off. Yeah, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They're back on now. It's all good. Uh, this week, no. I uh, went to the rugby on Saturday. We had the Wales South Africa game. It was a good day out. I don't know if you picked a better game to watch that or the Swans, but um, the result was oh, the yeah. same in the end. Yeah, two losses. Great day. That was a good day out, to be fair. I enjoyed it. I got a question about that, though. I saw something on TikTok about a pitch invader, just as yeah. Wales looked like they might be going over in the corner. Do you think it, yeah. it, it he actually stopped them scoring the try? I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to say he was definitely going to score because there was covering like defence, but pass sort of goes behind him I think to avoid the guy running on the pitch so I don't know yeah it's a bit of a weird one a bit frustrating when the score was what it was because that could have been game changer ridiculous time to run on the pitch or... yeah. one minute was it do we know was it a Welsh fan or was it a... I'm not sure it was a Welsh fan yeah oh. silly thing to do. Uh, I don't uh, understand like, that I just I don't know that that uh, um that Javo person as well, he got on the pitch last week, didn't he? And he got on the pitch in the Island Japan game as well. So how is he? How are they getting away with this? If you get on the pitch once, surely you've got a ban for the rest of your life. I don't really get that. They, the second there time. Wa- wasn't, uh, I don't think they've ever done that in rugby before. If someone runs on the pitch. But now they've given that um, that guy a lifetime ban, haven't they, from well, the Millennium. Well, yeah, silly, silly. I don't understand, yeah. though, there's... You get on though, surely. Like this shouldn't be. A... Yeah, so, but I don't know. Yeah, I think like I used to love going to the internationals, but I think the rugby now has become like it's almost like the cricket, like the T Twenty. Yeah, it's just it's like stag do's and dress up and everybody smashed and people running on the pitch. It won't be it's long like, before they it, ban drinking on the terraces, like in football. Mm. Yeah, oh, it's it's getting like that. A lot of like uh, football esque. Chants in the concourse, I noticed as well. Yeah, a few, wasn't like that, almost yeah. a few near like skirmishes between South African fans and Wales fans. As much as well, there wasn't like, like that in the uh, New Zealand game, though. No, We're nothing to sing it about was... against New Zealand. We've got nothing to say. Oh, no, exactly. We were getting smacked, so yeah. yeah. Um, well, Anthem was phenomenal though, in uh, in the, against New Zealand with the well, internationals, with the internationals, though, like they probably cost too much for a lot of. You know the actual people who care about watching all the games, so then people when they cost so much, you get a lot of people that just go as a one-off because it's a day out. Because you know it's an, yeah. it's, it's all Wales playing New Zealand, and they call, how much was the tickets for that? Eighty quid plus, probably. Yeah, I think plus. it was a range to be fair. Yeah, I think it was a bit of a yeah. range between. But yeah, so you go plus. in as a bit of a day out, and then you don't really go to all of them, and then you just get a mixture of people going to all these different matches and it's not really the people that are going to go on a proper I mean I think everyone enjoys it like everyone enjoys watching the rugby but then it's it's cracking day someone enjoying watching the game and someone really invested in like you you buy a season ticket because you're invested in your team that's you know what you probably really want to push in your team on but obviously the people behind any sports team and organisation want money and that's what comes first so yeah they make a killing they must make an absolute oh, kill. It, I calculated it. So against New Zealand, there were seventy-five, well, up to seventy-five thousand fans, or whatever. Like it was meant to be sold out, and then I just calculated it on based on you know a seventy-five pound ticket. That's like five and a half mil just off ticket sales. Yeah, but for the but there was there was quite a lot of empty seats in the South Africa game in the sort of the top tier. Yeah, there were and quite a few in in the New Zealand one as well, but never used it, to get that though. Never used to no. get it. Like any Wales game, Six Nations, or especially like um, New Zealand, South Africa, Australia, those three in the Six Nations game, you could never, you'd never see empty seats in the stadium. So I don't know whether it's the price People or might just, still be worried oh, after COVID. It could also be COVID, yeah, 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 and then you've got the COVID pass yeah, situation. So it could be yeah. a mixture of things, I think. But um, I think it's early to say if it's people not interested I think the price might have something to do with it but they've been expensive for a while so although people are a bit pushed for money a little bit more at the moment because of everything going on so perhaps it is a contributing factor and then the public transport on the way home that's a nightmare oh, especially with Covid involved there but 
we're not here necessarily to do a rugby podcast, so uh, I was wish it was a good conversation, kind of a bit off the whim. But Ali, that was your week been? Uh, tiring, to say the least. Um, oh yeah, back <laughs> in work now, are you? So, uh, yeah, up early. just working a load and, uh, and uh, sleeping a lot, I guess. You get used to it. Back to the work and life. Grind. Well, welcome back yeah. to like the reality. The reality, hey. yeah. Come back, it sucks. <laughs> Well, yeah, mine's been pretty boring as well. Standard, just um, working. Although I was in Bristol last weekend, so that was interesting. Did a bit of shopping and all the Christmas stuff starting to come out. So, yeah, that time of year, you know. Yeah, Christmas is starting. Has anyone noticed now that And I thought when I was younger, it was like you had Halloween and bonfire night. Then there was like a little bit of a gap before Christmas started. But now it's like Halloween, Christmas. Away. I think it's been that for the last couple of years, but I thought this year it's been later mm. in terms of stuff. You get mm. a lot of obviously working in that industry myself, but like there's definitely a delay on what we would normally have with our Christmas product and when we were out shopping. Because yeah. um, we go for my partner's birthday around well last weekend, so quite regular we've been to Bristol. We usually go to Bristol Bath, but um, we we always see Christmas stuff when we're there, but when we went this year, there was like shops that didn't have anything, or shops that were just setting up their Christmas sections. So it was definitely a bit slower this year, but I guess that's down to all the delivery situation and into, like, uh, like stock situation. There's definitely people are struggling and shops are struggling to get what they need in. That's definitely real. It's like that in work with us. So yeah, I went into Cardiff on Friday, which was the fifth, which was bonfire night, and there was Christmas everywhere. Yeah, it's but it is everywhere, but it just doesn't seem as much as um, it would normally be. Like, if you go in, like, John Lewis and, like, Deb, well, Debenhams isn't there anymore, but um, usually you'd have everything, like, all in front of you, all the decorations, but it just wasn't as big as what it normally is. I just noticed. So, Fair I think enough. we went in, uh, what's the other one? House of Fraser, and they didn't have anything. There was no Christmas there. Yeah. So you can see the gap where they'd started to build the, sh- the Christmas yeah. stuff. And they had like two stands with gifts on it, and then like ten stands were empty, because obviously they were waiting for the stuff to come in. But yeah, oh, fair enough. Sign of the times. Anyway, let's get to what we're actually here to talk about. So yeah, welcome back to Swans Cast. So it's your place for all Swansea City um, discussion, news, and you know we just talk about what's going on with the club uh, as a group of fans. Obviously, all of our opinions. So we'd like to engage with you. So let us know in the comments what you think. Um, and don't forget to subscribe as well to keep up to date with everything we do or you can follow us and listen to our stuff on Spotify as well so we've kind of gone down the route at the moment that we're doing like one weekly um, podcast and then sometimes we do extras here and there where we get time to do it it kind of just works better with our work life uh, time span as well so it's uh, a little bit more consistent stuff this way anyway only one game to talk about this week um, obviously as I said we're heading into international break so we played Bournemouth on the weekend high fly in Bournemouth who top of the championship I believe at the time of playing them they were topped by two points from Fulham only lost one game this season which was against Preston the week before which ultimately might have been quite a bad thing for us because I think quite often when you're on a long and beaten run maybe you can get complacent but as soon as you lose that one game you're a bit annoyed and you want to bounce back and it seemed like that might have been the case this weekend as uh, Swansea went down 4-0 away to Bournemouth. So what do you think of uh, initial thoughts on the match then, Ali, to start with you this time? Ooh, making a change. Um, I mean, I only managed to really catch the highlights, to be honest. I couldn't find a place to watch it. But um, I, I think from you know the live text and stuff, I feel like we were dominating possession up until the point where they sort of got that counter and scored and then I think it sort of all went out of the window. Um, but, I, yeah, I, I can't fully comment in a, in a way. Um, yeah. well, I think we started strong from, from the highlights that I saw and the sort of counter-attack, there was just a lot of space and we went well, one another. I, I think we're all in the same boat, really. Like, it's quite difficult... Um, if you don't go to all the away matches, it's gone difficult again to watch them, I think, um, which is a bit frustrating. Uh, obviously, yeah. with COVID, it was really good and you could watch most of the games and that was really nice. And I think now we've had that, it's even more frustrating. Now we can't have that. 
again. Yeah. Obviously, money is behind it, sky is behind it. We've had conversations about it in the past, but it's got to be like I just it's about time that football just modernized this um, sort of the way that it's watched. You've got all these things like in other sports, like the zone is a big player now in like boxing and some other stuff they got going on. I think they're into F1 and they've got a couple of other things going on there where you just pay a monthly fee and you can like stream whatever you want basically whatever they're showing and I think that is the way to go somebody just needs to like do it for football yeah I think it'll come in at some point but like Amazon sort of broke a little bit into the market didn't they because I like I quite liked what they did when they've had their fixtures they've just got like all yeah. the streams of the games which is quite good but it just you can't get the monopoly off Sky at the moment unless the, unless that contract runs out in the Premier League yeah. the EFL know. say you open it up to other people yeah, just, surely it's change. in the EFL's interest because they don't have they don't have that many games on TV now. The Premier League is everything's back to normal in a way. Obviously, under lockdowns and stuff and COVID, there was a lot more EFL games being shown because everyone was at home. They were changing all the time, so they had like in the Premier League in some stages they were trying to like do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday to try and show more. And then as a result of that, we were getting more in the EFL as well because the other gaps weren't taken up. And vice versa, yeah. um, but now obviously it's gone back to normal. More Premier League games, less EFL games. We get like one or two a week, is it, or one or two a weekend? Not on the telly. Yeah, you might get one on a Friday and one on a Saturday morning, maybe. Yeah, so I feel like can't they negotiate their own contract with someone that's gonna offer more? Like, surely if you've got someone willing to pay them for the football, that's gonna show more of the football. That's gonna be better for all the clubs in the long term. But yeah, um, I think we've got a lot to say on that topic, but we'll, maybe we'll revisit it in a mm-hmm. full podcast. Do a, whole, do a whole podcast on like yeah. the TV situation because it does my head in. Yeah, I just wanted to highlight it as, because obviously yeah. trying to talk about the game, but we can't necessarily watch it all as in depth as yeah. we want to every week when it's away. Saturday, three o'clock is the worst. The Carabao Cup one does my head in. Like you cannot watch, you cannot watch a Carabao Cup no. game. Yeah. Like if no. the Swans played away a couple of times a season in the, in the Cup, you cannot watch that game yeah. unless you go to it. And I know I know there are ways and means of it, but I can't really discuss them in a I mean even that is, like this. <laughs> even those are difficult though. Yeah. Um require a fee or you know, it's not necessarily hundred percent safe and secure and you take your own risks, I guess. But yeah. But when I when I'm in work I like to like be able to put my break at the right time and watch a lot of the match, but I just can't when it's this situation. But, but, pe- but people yeah. are going to do it. Like I know it's risky, but people are going to do it when you can't you, you can't watch your team. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Anyway, uh, what do you think of what you saw the match, Lee? <laughs> yeah, I'll save that for another day. Uh, I didn't cut it, to be honest, because I think there was a lot of uh, hype going into the game. I thought we were playing, obviously we've been playing great since the international break. The test against Bournemouth, I thought we would put a bit more of a a bit more of a fight of it, but I think team like to me watching the highlights. What like we played well up until we went one nil down, and then um, a one nil a half time is still in the game, and then I think they they score the second goal then, and we kind of just implode then. Um, what did you say last yeah, week? Oh, I said, uh huh. The draw was miles off. Wow. But, I mean, it was so it was a bit. Of, there was almost there was almost a little bit of like. Expectation going into it because we've been playing so well. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Go back to last week. Though, I, think, I think I said like we kind of earned a little bit of no pressure you in terms of if we do lose because of our form, um, and you don't really mind losing away at top of the league if you're going to lose to someone, then that's the perfect team to lose to, isn't it? And away as well. Like one one team they've lost to this season and they've played seventeen matches, so. It's not like we're the only team this has happened to. They've only drawn four others, so yeah, 12 wins. So yeah, it's not the end of the world at all, but I think you're right in terms of the game overall. It looked like we actually started the game better, um, looking at the momentum, graph yeah. and sofa score as well. That does seem to back that up. Had a couple of chances, had a little bit of a penalty shot, which we'll discuss in a minute, but then when we go 1-0 down, which to be fair was a good um, goal, worked from Bournemouth and a good finish from Dominic Solanke um, but again we'll talk about that in detail in a second I just, see, I just feel like that fizzled us out of the game and as much as we didn't concede another one in the first half as soon as they got that second at the beginning of the second half I feel like it was a little bit game over 
Um, they were just comfortable then, did what they needed to do, and they got well on top then before 3 0 and just cruise control from there. But then we were making our own mistakes at that point and kind yeah. of made things worse for ourselves. But yeah, we'll get into it now. So, start with a penalty shout if we're going from chron- chronological order. So, I said we started the game quite well. Um, Ethan Led is the culprit here. So, we've already spoke last week about him and penalty shouts that he's not getting. There's been two or three before this week. Um, mm. I think there was two in the last two games and there was another one earlier on. But this one, again, is debatable. I know we've got... Because we don't have here. Steve, Co- Steve Cooper and his refs in his well, pocket. There's so, okay, so we... what do you make of the incident then, Alid? Let's hear your opinion first. From the replay angles I've seen, I think it is a penalty. But I don't, what, I don't know what the timestamp of the shout was, to be honest. I think he was right, I know. Right I know it was early, start. but... I don't know, like, how early on, etc. I don't know. I mean, I think he definitely catches lead. I don't know if it's a, enough contact in a way. And lead doesn't actually make any sort of fuss over it. He just sort of falls and just. So you're lies saying there. it is a penalty. But then you say you I've, don't know if it's yeah, enough contact. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. That's the thing. Like, I'm very much on the fence with it. Um, okay, getting splinters on our fence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go on then, Lee. I know your view, so maybe you can share. <laughs> I, I, to be fair, when I watched the highlights on Sunday, um, I thought it was a pen all day, but then I just watched it back now before we've done the podcast, and I slow did slow mo and watched it, and I don't, I don't think he gets touched. I watched it really slow. I think he yeah. sort of dangles his leg. He might have caught his back his leg. leg himself, yeah, or something. He kind of leaves his leg dangling back to expecting contact. Maybe there's a there's a tiny bit, but I think I think he's he's trying to buy it. You're saying um, Raheem Sterling special, wouldn't you? He's the he's the Sterling is the absolute best. They're leaving his leg dangling backwards and going down and making it look like he's got a pen. Um, yeah. It was kind of that. Sim- I don't I don't put him in that bracket. Hey, well, I mean, they're from so. Manchester, you know, or the, or both from Manchester wanna, yeah. clubs, in there, So, I'm not from. I don't think I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna like you know. Brand him with the uh, the same thing as, as Sterling, but well, no, like, you've got uh, to ask a question a little bit because we did have that discussion last week where we were saying he's not getting any shouts as he got a reputation. I didn't know much about Ethan Led from before when he came here, so perhaps he does. I don't know, but you shouldn't be basing things on reputation anyway. Go into the previous ones. I think a couple of them, if not all, for me, should have been penalties, and I'm shocked how he hasn't got one so far. But then this one, that was the same as you actually, where thought it was now i've just done the closer inspection we did it at the same time mm-hmm. as much as it's hard to see if there is contact and what the sort of contact is he does leave his leg trailing slowly so there might be contact but then has he gone looking for it that's a question but then the fact that we have to like go 50 percent slow mo speed to try and work out if there was contact yeah. i think you've got to kind of give the ref a benefit of the doubt there in real time he's got a de- decision to make in real time we're trying to slow it down and we still can't tell so if you're not sure then I guess you can't really give it. The other question that's been raised, because we did put the little clip of us talking about these penalty decisions last week on Twitter, and it was a bit of a conversation. So Alex from Send Him Off Podcast did uh, mention, basically, he either goes down and they get a penalty, or if the referee deems it not to be penalty when he's going down, then he has to have deemed it to be a dive, and he should be booked for simulation. So you can't see how neither is happening. Um, and that kind of makes sense, but then... I think for all the other previous incidents, and yeah, I think definitely, and even for this one. But I guess if the referee thinks, I'm just not sure, that's probably why he's done neither. Yeah, again, yeah. I think, well, I think I think he's got it right, to be fair. I think yeah. he got the decision right. But the only problem is, you say, like, the ref shouldn't go on reputation. Now, when you're looking back at the game, I'm sure, you know, the referees review the games, don't they? When they look back at that, they'll. You know, oh, I was right. He's left his leg dangling there. Yeah. Um, is that his card marked? Hopefully not, because, you know... It seems like his card was already do marked, that. so does it even matter at this point? Well, yeah. yeah we he, maybe we'll get one this season at some point, but... We, we can't seem to get a penalty legitimately, and we can't seem to win a penalty when you're dangling a leg either, so... Yeah. But, um... Yeah, yeah it's been... Um... Keith Cooper's definitely had a word in he since uh, Steve's gone. Like, no, no more favours for them. 
But um, yeah, I, I don't know. So do you think yellow card then? If it's not a penalty, should he have had a yellow? No, I think. Well, yeah, by the law, yeah, should have had a yellow because he leaves his leg dangling there, tries to get a penalty. So he should have it. But I think I agree with what you're saying. It happens so quick. He's not 100 percent sure, so he just he goes with neither. What were you at? So it's a bit of common sense. I don't know. Oh, he's like the ref. He, he should be, he, yeah. He be a good just, ref. just like the ref. Just get a whistle oh, exactly. ref and you're sorted. <laughs> Except I'd actually be biased to the Swans, not to uh, other teams. Yeah, well, I think yellow card too, but I think um, the other ones in the previous games have been more clear cut. Like the one where we scored, Perot scored the other day, didn't he? It was against uh, Coventry, but... I'm not convinced yeah. the ref is going to give it. I thought we played advantage, but I don't know. I don't know if we would have got that penalty had we not scored. That would have been interesting to see. Um, but yeah, let's move on from Led. Let's hope that he doesn't continue to leave his leg dangling because he's quite tricky. He not made someone to get into that position, and I feel like I think he not met not made someone later in the game as well. Um, he's tricky on the ball, and he can take players on. And we haven't had someone doing that, running into the box and doing that for a good while. So he just needs to keep doing those things and he's going to get brought down, literally. Like, he's going to get brought down um, a couple of times and I'm sure he will get one. He just needs to not look for it because people are starting to ask the question if he's got a reputation and as wrong as it is, if that ever affects a decision, it does sometimes with some referees and you're just not helping yourself. So he needs to cut any question marks out. Um... You know, if he doesn't get a penalty, let us question the referee. We don't want people questioning whether it was him that was looking for it. It's the wrong yeah, questions. But, yeah. no, I know, I know, I agree with what you're saying. I think he goes down because there's not many options in the box. He gets in that position. Yeah. I don't think anybody's in the middle, so rightly or wrongly, that's yeah. why he's probably done it. But, probably, but just hit it, innit? This, this is where the game is this is where the game is wrong. I am ninety nine percent sure. If that is Salah, yes up in. Or Ronaldo perhaps. Or no, maybe not Ronaldo. Yes, Sometimes Ronaldo is uh he doesn't always get him, does he? I think yeah, he's but I, I'm ones. pretty sure if like Salah or even Sterling maybe they probably get it. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Mm. Big team, big team yeah. players uh, always tend to get the favourable decisions, perhaps. But anyway, let's move on. Um, speaking of lead, I think we stay on him, but not for a different reason. Going into the first goal. So I'll get your views on what happened, but I'll start off here and say I think Bournemouth have done a little bit of their homework. Um, I think you might have mentioned it last week where they said they would exploit yeah. that flank. I don't necessarily think they exploited Led though. Obviously, he's pushed up. But when you look at the start of this move, he is there in a defensive position, uh, defending against someone up on the right. But they pass infield and then just launch a ball forward to the, like, the gap. But for me, the problem is... Bennett behind Led rather than Led himself pushing on. Because if you're going to have someone that's pushed so far up the field, Bennett is not the quickest person then to be leaving exposed 1v1 versus the wingers. And a team that likes to play wide and has a bit of pace out wide and creates a lot of chances from wide, which Bournemouth do, and Kirk from uh, the Bournemouth channel uh, that you know we featured on last week was saying that most of their stuff is from down the left, that's where they like to get their chances from, that's where this yeah. gap is, that's where Bennett is and I feel like that's where we got exposed, he's 1v1 the player's like basically on the line and as soon as he gets past Bennett, Bennett cannot recover Yeah, well, yeah I will take a little bit of credit for that because I did say it last week didn't I So you're, t- you're I saying that they're, they, they're sharing the uh, our podcast with the managers in. Well maybe, yeah obviously Scott Parker watches as well, so cheers Scott if you're listening but we had uh, no. We were saying about load, and it's we not were Parker wondering anymore, if load was going to. Oh yeah, it is. My bad. He's yeah, following me was last year. Um, yeah, we were saying about if Lowe was going to play on that left hand side, and I was worried, obviously going into that sort of gap between Bennett and uh, Led, uh, for the reasons you just said. I think like if it goes past Led, that channel is uh, obviously Bennett's pace is uh, not you know, yeah, not there basically. Right. But yeah. uh, I think it was. I think this game though. Like obviously we've been playing well so far, and I'm not going to like criticise. Obviously we've still got room for improvement, um, but I think just that game as a whole highlighted all the little um, things that I've been worried about. Like we said about that channel between Led and um, 
Ed and Bennett. It happened in the second half as well for the third goal, I think. Got in that channel again. Oh, I thought um, the third goal was... Um, yeah, the third or fourth were, I say, our own fault, but we'll talk about them. Yeah, I think the it might have been the second was, goal. Yeah. I think it was basically the same thing for the second goal. It was just like a through ball, and then... Yeah, because... I was the Leif, second goal, actually. Leif Davis, it was, wasn't it? But he's playing on the, uh, the left... He's left yeah. back rather than... Um, it's, it's those two, exactly. Bennett tries to play it to lead, and the fullback gets in front of lead, and he's right down yeah. that channel in, and then he cross yeah. it in. Um, like Jaden Anthony Selenti's also goal. had a chance at some point after the first goal, which was another yeah. through ball between the in the in the channel. Yeah, but like the point the point that sticks out for me is like I said about the isolating Bennett and that gap down the left. Um, but it's not even their winger that's doing it. So that shows me that they're targeting that area because it was Billin who got the assist. Billin, so yeah. he's he's drifted from his central role to the left down that channel, um, and that says to me they're looking at that as an opportunity. So. Um, as Kirk was telling us, Preston exploited their left-hand side last week when they had um, an injury or someone missing there that would normally be playing. And obviously they had that person back this time, but they've done basically the same to us this week where, you know, when lead pushes up, Question. Ben, it's got to be in the right place. But sometimes when you've got someone as tricky and pacey, it's just tough on him. To, it's a tough ask for him to defend against that because it is a big gap either side of him so I'm not necessarily criticising Bennett but the personnel in that role he hasn't got the pace for it yeah. let's just be honest but would Cabango have made the difference no. or Latty? no no would either of them have made the difference you know no Cabango against Fulham the same thing yeah. same position exactly. it's like a centre back is playing in between a centre back and a right back sort of location without that extra support of a traditional back four Right back, uh, like the gaps are bigger, so a centre back's covering more ground, and a centre back's not as quick, like normally. Something you know, some are, but the ones we have are not necessarily um, good in the air, good other strengths. But when the gaps are a bit bigger and they've got a bit more ground to cover, then there is opportunities there. Yeah, um, exactly. And as soon as they get behind him, and then you go like Norton's going to be covering or, or whatever, everyone's then out of position a little bit, and that's obviously where. The opportunities lie with the passes, and obviously this was a cross in, and Solanke was basically yeah. free when he. Strange, because like Bennett is essentially playing right back, like you said. Because what we've noticed in the last couple of weeks is, whoever's playing in that deep role, it's been Downs or it's been Corey Smith when he's been injured. He'll drop into the centre half with Carl Norton, and then you've got Bennett and Manning as essentially full backs, then with Led and Bidwell just like on the halfway line, basically. They'll sort of drop in as like a, a makeshift back four sometimes. When Bennett is out in those wide channels, it's just like guaranteed yellow card or just not pace. Yep, but got a yellow card. Okay, like you said, yeah, classic. I don't want to, yeah, like you said, I don't want to criticize him too much because he has been class. I think the last couple of weeks, I think he's settled into that role. But I think he was exposed on Saturday. I think it's always going to be a target. Um, and again, that doesn't necessarily mean we're criticizing Bennett because at the end of the day, he's at the tail end of his career and he's not the quickest. And that is what it is. You can't can't criticise someone for being a bit slower than another player, but he's been asked to go in a a place where those things are going to be exploited and, you know, whether Martin needs to... What does that say about... What does that say about the other centre-halves that we've got, though, that we're playing Bennett at the tail end of his career? Because he clearly doesn't trust Cabango, Reese Williams and Landabodia. Yeah, well, that's, that's the question, isn't it? Because... He brought Reese Williams in. I mean, the yeah, other two true. are not technically his players, so you can you can obviously say, well, you know, for a fair enough there. But he brought Reese Williams in, and he's not really making a big impact. He didn't even get on the bench for this game. Uh, and Latabodia, it looks like he sees him more as a wing back, which is a bit weird. But yeah, I, but and obviously he doesn't trust anybody else to play in that middle role instead of Kyle Norton, which makes sense because otherwise the easy fix would be yeah. Move Kyle Norton over to the right of the three, and, and then yeah. yeah. To be fair, since yeah, like he's gone to this three solid, and we've consistently played them. We said earlier on in the season we're making too many changes in defence, but since we have been mm-hmm. more consistent there, our form has got better. So you know, is, there's swings and roundabouts here, but um, yeah. maybe it's just something we need to look at addressing in January or or going forward. Uh, is some more comfortably ball playing defenders that can play. A mixture of centre back or right back or left back, whatever it is that the role is asking of them. Um, but yeah, 
Bennett, you know, not to criticise him, just he'd been asked to do a difficult job and some teams can exploit him more than others. But obviously we're playing top of the league, Bournemouth are flying and yeah, they exploited it. Okay, it's not the end of the world, but it is what it is there. So going to the second goal, I think it's probably goal of the game. Um, so Leif Davis, uh, I, I didn't see all of the build-up for this one, but basically Leif Davis is another cross and Dominic Solanke, like on the inside near post it's just doing an overhead kick and puts it in good finish it's uh yeah it's um i don't think it was an overhead was it like a it was like it was like a half volley head. into the into the near post oh, yeah. kind you of know, on the side know, it was a good right, yeah okay not quite a bicey kick but like his foot was well in the air and goes above his yeah. head just in the I side think, like, uh, like, it was like a half right, volley like what routledge did right, a few mm, years back against yeah. west brom not quite Similar. a special but I think, I think it was, it was like a post that caught the keeper off guard. Yeah, yeah. it did. Good. Good, I think it was. I think it was a great finish. To be fair, from yeah. the cross, it was oh, a great yeah. finish. Well, but I mean, I think in the build-up, we lose the ball, don't we? Um, yeah, it Downs tries Bennett to go tries to, to lead. Yeah, Bennett, Bennett tries, tries to go to lead, lead, and then it just goes. Yeah. It just goes. Um, it, yeah. I think Bennett puts in a challenge, and then it drops to. It goes up in the air, and drops to a Bournemouth player, and then he plays someone down the wing. And then it's just a played square across the box and it's like a half volley in, yeah. into uh, who is it Solanke I think yeah so this came just after half time so that's when we went 2-0 down um, and, and that is what it is then I think the game at that point was difficult to come back from 1-0 still in it and we did have um, we didn't mention it but in the first half there was a couple of chances for us which I know I'm backtracking a bit now but it's important I think that we highlight these because we haven't really talked about anything we done bar our the penalty incident, Mystics. but um, and Cham had a shot from outside the box, but it was quite tame and went straight to the keeper um, after getting a bit of space in the middle of the park there, and also Piru, I think it was, he had a shot from outside the box too on target where maybe he should have played Patterson in, who was running through into the box um, but you know, Piru's full of confidence, he's striker, wants to score goals and hits it with his uh, left foot and yeah, it's saved again, but can't blame him for him having a go. It's easy to blame him when you lose four nil, but at that point, I think he was entitled to have an effort, and he was on target. So, otherwise, there wasn't too much to talk about. I think Piro had another effort later on in the game where he makes himself a bit of space, moves it from left to right, back to his left, and has a shot. But again, easily saved from the, from the keeper that one. But yeah, two nil down. Um, I think, like I said, the game difficult to come back from at that point. The, the the last two goals from Bournemouth, one of them 64th minute, the other one right at the end in the 90th plus four, both of them for me are our own fault. Um, the 3 nil one then, Jaden Anthony. So Mac Grimes actually gives the ball away in the centre of the park, but I think it's easy here to criticise him and say, oh yeah, he's given the ball away, he's done a bad pass. But if you look at the bigger picture, what's going on here? I think ben it's Hamer. Hamer. I think, yeah. Yeah, so you can say Hamer. Hamer plays him yeah. the ball. But there's nowhere for Grimes to pass to. Um, so the situation is you've got Hamer with the ball, plays it to Grimes as he's being charged down by Bournemouth player. Grimes is picking up the ball with a player behind him, obviously charging him down. So he's he's uh, facing his own goal. He can't turn because the player's quite tight to him. He's got to play a first-time pass. But then you've got Bennett, who's marked on the left, and you've got Norton, who has got a player running towards him, knowing he's the only option on the right. So Grimes is playing a first-time pass to Norton, it wasn't like pinpoint pass, but it wasn't a bad pass either. It was coming to Norton. It's just because Norton's running onto the ball from our goal, and the Bournemouth player's running onto the the ball from you know towards our goal. He gets to the ball first, essentially. Um, but he doesn't have another option unless he just kicks it out, perhaps for a throw in or a corner, just to not concede possession. Oh. But I, I mean, think... Norton was beaten to to the ball. Should, yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I'm on about Grimes. Go back now. to the keeper. Oh, Should right, go back yeah. to the keeper, really. Yeah, but the keeper's yeah, marked. Keeper. The keeper's marked. Like, so I think it's Solanke. He cuts the pass off as soon yeah. as keep, the keeper's played the ball. Yeah, um, he doesn't really have an option. To be fair, not many options there. Yeah, so I, I, what I was going to say is I think Hamer here should see the bigger picture and just get rid of the ball. And you said yeah. about us playing about at the back when it's not necessary sometimes. You tune it down. And I don't want to criticise it because it's worked. You know, We're getting better at doing it. But when you tune it down, Bournemouth are obviously like cruising at this point. They're just limiting the options and then we're giving the ball away and it's cost us there. 
sometimes. And he has been quite good at doing it a lot. Picking the right decision, just clearing it. But here, yeah, I think, yeah, you got this one wrong. I, gotta say, I, I feel like after this third goal, though, we feel like we've lost our heads a bit as well. Um, like, you can just see the sort of desperate passes and stuff like that coming after that. And it's just mistake after mistake. Um, and they had another good chance, like, straight after that, where I think Manning clears the ball, or the Aimer plays the ball to Manning. Manning tries to play a ball to Whitaker and then steps up and the ball the Bournemouth player just plays it back over Manning's head. Um and they're in on goal again and it just goes wide past the post. Like I feel like after the third goal we just lost our heads and everyone was just sort of everywhere. Yeah, what was it gonna say, Lee? No, I was saying it kinda of feeds into what I said earlier where this game sort of highlighted uh, the the little things are not sort of perfect yet. One of them, obviously, we said about being Bennett, and we won't go back to that. But I mean, like again, like playing out from the back. Um, I think I, I don't know what you boys think, but it just seems there's a massive difference between our ability to like play football at home and, and away. Um, I just think it's maybe just a different, you know, it's, it's obviously different away from home. I mean, we've only won two games away from home, and both games we've gone ahead. I just don't think. The way that we play sometimes is set up to chase a game away from home. In that situation, like 2 0 down, like you said, messing about there at the back. I'd go as far as to say, I think the way way that we set up to play, you can't chase the game anyway. It doesn't matter away or home. It's just at home, teams generally sit back a bit more and allow us to have the ball more. And it's worked out quite well for us. But when we go away and they don't necessarily sit back as much and they challenge us a bit more and then we go behind, and then we can't get back into it. But if we go behind at home, it's the same story quite often. That yeah, exactly. Yeah. Down. That's what I was getting at. I think, yeah. yeah, that's what I was getting at. I think when you go away, especially when you go away to teams at the top of the league, who, are, you know, they, they'd expect to win the game at home, they probably press us a bit more aggressively. Um, and we just we just can't get a game going. So I think it's quite stand out at the moment. I know, I'm not like, yeah. I'm not criticising, but I just mean, you know, we know we're not perfect yet. It's been great um, last couple of weeks. They've played some brilliant stuff, but we're not the we're not the finished article yet. Um, I just think, yeah, like away from home is the same against Fulham. But when we go to these teams away, we just seem to be seem to fall apart sometimes at the back. When we were two 0 down there, we just apart. And we'll come on to the last goal as well. It was just a bit of a mess. I don't know whether I don't know whether he needs to maybe have a plan B. I know we don't. I know we'd like Alex to stick to his guns and play possession football. 2-0 down away from home. You're just not, not going to come back playing that football. I think that's always been a historic trait of any manager that wants to play this pass in football for Swansea. They just don't like the change to a plan B. And I don't mean like, you know, bring on five centre-halves and start pumping the ball forward, but just maybe get a bit more direct, maybe put extra bodies in the middle of the field and just go a bit not more. Not called Cardiff, Lee. Oh, I know, God, I wouldn't go that far. But... <laughs> I would maybe suggest... <laughs> Go to a back four and try a four three three, perhaps, because you yeah. can still play the same way in that formation. But perhaps you offer a more steady back line, and there's no reason why you can't play Led as right winger. And what I'm saying is, if you were like, say for example, you are two 0 down with half hour to go in a playoff final, well, what are you what are you going to do? You're going to just keep so passing you, the ball around the can't... back, or you're going to you're going to have to chase the game. Yeah. But yeah, look, it'll be yeah, interesting so it to see how... might be a bit harsh because might be a bit harsh because that's where we are at the moment. I mean, yeah. like you said, I expect us to lose the Bournemouth and follow them away. At the moment, so you know, it's things that will get sorted. I'm sure. Yeah, and let's not forget, we did beat West Brom, was the other one, perhaps at home. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. uh, margins, but there's obviously tweaks needed away. Got a good win, mm-hmm. uh, win at Coventry. Looked a bit better, but again, it's a different level. But. You've got, to, you've got to work to the level where you can p- compete with the best if you want to get back to the Premier League. So that's the level where we've got to judge it. And I'm sure we, we, all, we all said mid-table finish this year is what we expect. So we're not expecting that overnight. But obviously highlighting where perhaps improvements need to be looked at, being made going forward. Anyway, the fourth goal, we did just touch on it. Again, our own downfall. Uh, Manning, I think this was for me. Yeah. Just yeah, you're in the cent- you're in in the penalty box, and he tries to dribble it out of the penalty box, basically, and just runs into the Bournemouth player. He literally turns the way the Bournemouth player is tackling him, 
And the commentary was like, oh, he's dribbled the wrong way. It's like, well, just don't dribble it there. Just don't dribble it when you're literally in the penalty box with no one covering behind you. Just don't do it. Like, that's surely rule number one. Yeah, get rid of it there. I was actually like, I think playing just... five aside last night, and they were doing the same thing. So, that, like the goalie passes it out to the guy on the edge of the box, and he tries to go on a run, and the striker just sticks, sticks his foot out, gets the ball, and he's just one on one with the keeper. It's like, why are you trying to dribble past when you're last man? Just don't do it. Your player or? Yeah, our player. Oh god. And they did it like five times in the match as well. It was like, remind me not to come play for you. Anyway, <laughs> it's not my team, <laughs> just saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, what do you make of this goalie? Yeah, not really much to say on that, to be fair. It's just, like you said, I just in that position, just get rid of it, trying to dribble out from there. It's just not going to work, but maybe 3 nil down, he's just kind of like, you know, screw it. We'll just try this and see what happens. Yeah, see what happens. We wouldn't have done that if we were you know, defending a lead. Yeah, perhaps. But, perhaps. Bennett gets in a block. And then the ball falls straight to Manning. Why he doesn't just go and hoof it, I will. I, j- I just don't understand. Yeah, it's a 94th yes. minute as well. Just finish the game 3-0 in there at that point. Just taking a risk. He has, he has the space and the opportunity just to just to hoof it. Yeah, well, I just don't know. A bit of a bad decision making there. Perhaps it's one of Manning's not so impressive games and perhaps that's an area where he's maybe under a bit of pressure when not everything's going your way, your team's behind, you're up against a good opposition. Maybe he's not the most calm and collective person on the ball there, um, but that's an area he needs to maybe work on. So, But again, we're in a championship, yeah. and you, I guess you expect that sort of stuff from players who are at this level. Uh, but yeah, Manny should be doing better there. There is one silver lining, though, because it was Jamal Lowe that dispossessed him. Huh. But luckily... He played the ball he didn't uh, score. across and Jason Anton I was, scored. Uh, I was thinking that about five minutes ago. I was like, oh my God, Lowe yeah. didn't score against us. He had an opportunity earlier on in the game and obviously he made the assist here. So, um, Hamer but, saved that, that chance, though, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. yeah. Um, well, so yeah, Hamer. we said the Swansea curse was broken because Di Cornell didn't score against us last week or whatever it was, <laughs> two weeks ago. Um, yeah, it's broken. Jamal Lowe didn't score. So. Oh, yeah. Just saving it all up for when Cooper comes with Forrest. Yeah, well, they haven't got any players, have they? Yeah, but well, it'll Yet. be uh, MK 90th minute penalty. Well, they've uh, <laughs> their form's gone a bit down oh, lately. Touch, touch, touch wood, Lee, because let's hope that doesn't happen. Sheffield, yeah, um, they've uh, not won in the last three. Anyway, we'll talk about uh, that in a minute. Just want to touch on the subs before we finish on this game. So, Felton obviously missing again. Um, it's got to be. Oh yeah, I've like... forgotten. To be honest, I've, I've literally forgotten about Felton now. Unfortunately, I think he's a good player, but I, I obviously he's not even included in any squad at the moment. I've forgotten about him. But I would have li- like in that game, he would have been perhaps good to come off the bench and have a bit of grit to like yeah, they, and get into. Yeah, but this is what I mean. Like two 0 down, or, or you know, even one 0 down away from home. Bring Fulton on to start winning ah. some ball in the midfield where we're like, you know, yeah, find something different. But well, he obviously doesn't like him. Corey Smith comes on and Liam Walsh comes on in midfield. So Corey Smith are downs and Walsh front and Cham. So Walsh plays a little bit ahead then by the look of that. Sup, unless Smith went up and Walsh came on, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I don't see like what Felton can't do that Smith does better. I don't know. I mean, obviously, the manager's preference. I'm not saying Smith is better or worse, but to be so more, much more involved, I just don't see it myself. Um, Smith's had good games this season. I just I felt there was a place for Felton, but obviously, it looks like it looks like his time is perhaps going to be up unless some massive oh. change happens in the next couple of weeks. It's weird, though. As far as I'm aware, the, nobody's addressed the Felton thing. I don't no, know he if anybody's asked about it as well. <laughs> Yeah, but nobody sort of like asked him about it. Like, where you know, where is he? I think it's just accepted that. I think he was I asked, mean, like, is he injured? And he was like, no, he's not injured. And that was it. Oh, great. And that was a couple of weeks ago. So, sorry, going back to what you were saying about subs. 66th, 67th minute subs, Smith and Whitaker on. I feel like he's tried to go 
maybe he's thought, oh yeah, let's go a little bit more attacking, take downs off because he's obviously like playing that sweeperish role, I guess. I think he is um, trying to go more attacking. And then I, I reckon. And Walsh on for we... Encham, with, oh sorry, uh, Whitaker on for Bidwell, but. Eh. Put the Whitaker and swing back. Yeah, I don't think the Smith subs attacking at all. That's just a like for like replacement. Obviously, Downs hadn't started since he'd been injured. This was the first one, so I feel like that probably would have happened regardless. And as for the Whitaker one, I think he did mention after the game uh, midweek that there would be changes for this game. However, there was only it was only Downs that was a change in the starting lineup. So I think Bidwell perhaps tiredness comes in there, and he probably would have gone off. And depending on the score line, if it was tighter. I think Latibodio would have come on. But just because we were behind at that point, 3 0, I think it was 3 0 at that point. Yeah, 3 0 at that point. Yeah, it was. That's probably why he's gone and risked putting Whitaker there, just because, like, what have we got to lose at that point? But guaranteed, if we were 1 0 down or 1 all or 0 0, that would have been Latibodio coming on. 100%. Which, you know, you can't really criticise that. That's fine. He wants to keep a point, perhaps, or whatever. But 3 0 down, yeah, that's why Whitaker's come on there. In wing, wing back, because obviously it's a bit of a weird. Uh, I've never seen him there before, or at least not often. Um, and Walsh again, I guess, and Cham, he's still been said a couple of times coming up to fitness. Although, perhaps you would have put Cullen on. A bit, bit surprised at that. Cullen was already on. No, he wasn't. Cullen didn't come no, on. He didn't come on. Yeah, it wasn't. Oh, sorry, no, I'm like, yeah, I'm looking at it wrong. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, looking at the so, uh, list wrong. I, you thought I was perhaps. looking at the subs list instead of the. Uh, yeah, maybe I think, uh, rest uh, <laughs> Cham, perhaps thinking he was game over. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I would have brought Cullen on as well. Maybe him and Whitaker just get some, I don't know, try something. But I don't think Cullen can do right at the moment because uh, still see on Twitter sometimes Cullen getting stick. I yeah. don't know what the agenda is. He doesn't even play. He could have gone two up top, perhaps, but Patterson behind him and see what happens there. But yeah, it is it is what it is there. Nice to see Whitaker get minutes, I guess. But um, I don't yeah. think he did a great deal. But then. If he's at wing back, then that's not his position either. So maybe can't yeah, go exactly. too hard on him there. But yeah, so look, two losses in the period between the international breaks with the other four games, wins, four or three. Take that. Is it four or three? Uh, it was four, wasn't it? Who did we have before West Brom? It was Cardiff, oh, West Brom. Ah, oh, so it was three wins then. Cardiff, West Brom, Coventry and Peterborough. Four wins, two losses and six. You take that. That's oh, was Cardiff the night. first game before or after the international break? Oh, after. After, first after. Yeah. Four wins and two losses. Um, yeah, I think if we had, if someone had told us that back before the Cardiff game, I think we all would have taken it. Um, oh, yeah. And you probably, I mean, would, look have, we you are probably would have picked West Brom and Bournemouth to, to be the two teams you lose to. But we won against West Brom and lost to Birmingham probably because of the tiredness afterwards, um, but then beat that loss to Bournemouth. So it's not really too far from what you'd ask for, I guess. Still a good uh, points return there. Um, the last thing, I think... Uh, and... Go on. Oh, you go on. No, it comes just after. I was going to say, not, obviously, not really. we just mentioned the subs, and the other thing I wanted to mention was who was in there, because we talked about Fulton, was Oberfermi. Mm. Yeah. So then you were telling me is something weird. Actually, he, before, is he before, before you do that, I just a quick thing saying about, like, you know, obviously it was a bad loss on that, but I like to do this because of the championship is so pretty. We have three games in a week. I check to see how many teams win all three games in a week and how, how many teams do you reckon this week won all three games Saturday, midweek, and Saturday? One. One. No, it was. Fulham. Fulham. Yeah, they were the only team in the, <laughs> in the whole division win three games in the week so everybody else drop points and that's just the way it is and they played we won West Brom Blackburn and Peterborough oh, Black um, but Bay. right and this perhaps is interesting because if you say three games in a week tired and that's all the rest of it comes into the third game perhaps they beat West Brom 3-0 which is a good win because West Brom aren't exactly like you know a second against third and they won 3-0 and then they smashed Blackburn 7-0 but then they, they, only beat, they only beat Peterborough 1 0, uh, the third game. So could have been a bit leggy. Oh, yeah. Peterborough down the bottom end of yeah. the table. Out of the three teams they played there, you wouldn't expect that to be the one they're going to struggle to win. Yeah, exactly. So not making excuses or anything, but it's definitely a factor. 
it's happened to us twice in a row where we've had three midweek games that we have two away games on the bounce. So we have home game on Saturday and then the two away games midweek, which is what happened. Oh, no, it didn't happen last time. Did we? we had two it was West Brom games. at home um, after Cardiff. Yeah, it was Cardiff and, and West Brom and then Birmingham. Like, but this time yeah, it was but, two, two away games. But Cardiff and West Brom are the games and then you're going away to Birmingham. So I'd still say it's like pretty yeah. commanding. Oh, yeah. But basically the point is like, Nobody, you know, we need Fulham, and I think it was only two teams, two or three teams last time. Like it's, it's just so hard to pick up three wins when you're doing Monday, when you're doing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. Yeah, definitely. Hang on, three. Just checking. <laughs> are you are you checking my? Are you no, checking no, no, my no. Words? Another one. So only six teams won two of them. Oh yeah, see, yeah. And we were one of them. So I would yeah, take that. yeah. I mean. It's demanding, isn't it, the league? And I think our style of football is even more demanding than the style perhaps we're playing under Steve Cooper. So when it does come to like... And we got tired last year, you know, the second half of the season. We were all saying they look leggy. Um, so, yeah, these three games in a week, we're definitely looking leggy at the end of it. And the, the, the performance drops off, didn't it? Because you could tell against Birmingham it wasn't the same as against Cardiff and uh, West Brom. And I think the same's happened this week with the two wins and then the drop-off here against... Uh, Bournemouth. Um, but yeah, yeah Uberfemi well, then, not on the bench. Russell Martin's come out and said he needs to be more professional and he knows why he's not on the team and he accepts the reasoning for why he's not on the team. So what do we make mm. of that? It's not good, is it? And for him to come out and say that as well, it's, it's, it's probably, I, I could be wrong, but it's probably worse than what it sounds because obviously he's going to downplay it in the media, isn't he? So yeah. for him to come out and actually say like oh. he needs to sort himself out, basically. Perhaps it was and just it's not happened before in there breaking COVID rules. Perhaps it's quite a I, common. I found one. An, I, I found another quote here, and he said something like, oh, "I've lost it now," but he said something along the lines of, "Which I'm hoping I can find it." Uh, he said something about like performances are not as important as culture in the group. Whether he's not fitting in or he's not doing in training he sort of said something like oh there we go it's a few disciplinary things in terms of the way that we train as a group timekeeping and that does matter so you know if maybe he's missed, like a, training maybe he's coming late yeah just shown late or something but like a couple said, of times uh, and maybe not taking it seriously so he said uh, I'm disappointed uh, but performance doesn't come before culture um, so yeah that's what he said Perhaps about he's it. come with a bit of a like ego, and he's been put in his place. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, well, fair play, good on Russell Martin. If you know, he did say in that interview as well. He said like, I'd be doing the same if it was like Perot, even though he's our top scorer. It'd be the same thing if you're not sort of fitting in with the culture of what he wants. Then, then, well, good on him. Setting the standard, and I guess that's a good way yeah. to keep the dressing room as well because discipline like that, you keep oh, control. Is this, is this what's happening yeah. with some of the other players? Fulton, maybe? Um, Can't see Williams not featuring. Not. I don't know, I just think Fulton... I feel like Fulton is mature enough to... Yeah, I don't think Fulton... Not... You gave him captaincy in the last game, he, you know, when he played against Brighton. We went to Brighton and he made him captain. So I don't think if he was having issues like that, he wouldn't he wouldn't be giving him captain. Well, and... I know, but sometimes you give someone captaincy and be like, right, you're a leader of this group now, like to give him the opportunity to... You yeah, know, but if he said one of the more senior like players with Oberfemi, yeah. Well, I, I know, yeah, this yeah. is. I think with the midfield, it's like quite stacked, and somebody has to miss out, and it's just it's just fault on. Yeah. But yeah, maybe I'm wrong and uh, being too biased, but yeah, it's only only one way to find out, and that's when they finally, perhaps uh, somebody questions him in a in a press, like you said. I mean, when you think about it, he's he's still only. 21 anyway, isn't he, I think? Uh, oh, Fami? I, I, I think he's 21. Yeah, he's younger. So, I mean, he's still Hannibal. got, you know, he's still maybe just got a bit of growth to do. All of us yeah, try to be young, though, so is it an excuse? Like, Cullen's the oldest, you just wouldn't think that. And yeah, that's true. You probably think Perot, Perot is, uh... 22 Perot. Young. Uh, but, yeah. Well, see what happens, see if he's in the squad after the international break. Hopefully he can 
sort himself out. But sticking on the news then, um, that's a word of Wine Street as we like to call this section. Reese Williams um, potentially set to be recalled by Liverpool, so they're claiming they're not happy with how much he's playing, which I guess that's understandable. Um, quite often in these loan agreements, they have like an agreed amount of playing time, and they're saying he's not reaching that. The article I'm reading does say there's potentially financial implications to Swansea for not uh, you know, agreeing to these and playing by the rules of how often Reese Williams should be playing. So that'll be interesting. Perhaps he'll get recalled in January. But again, we're stacked in defence. I was surprised we signed him in the first place. Um, got Brandon Cooper obviously sitting on the sidelines as well, not making the bench at the moment too. I thought was just as capable when he stepped in yeah. as, as a lot of the other guys. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. And perhaps I'm surprised that he's not more involved because I thought he was all right on the ball. But... Um, he's a yeah, I would not be surprised to see this one playing out with Reese Williams going. Give someone the opportunity to perhaps get someone else in that suits the style a bit more because we haven't been necessarily... I'm not saying he's been bad, but he hasn't exactly set the world on fire either when he's played. Yeah, it's a really strange one because I, I honestly thought when we signed him, I thought it was a good sign-in. I thought he was going to do a job for us. I don't know. For him not, for him to like regularly not even be in the match day squad... Got to be something, whether obviously he doesn't fit in with the way he wants to play, or whether yeah. there's something else going on, maybe his head's not right. Yeah. Um, it happens sometimes, maybe he's come down here and he just he doesn't like it, he doesn't want to be here. So yeah, Perhaps he's just not. Could, it could be that, could not be, so we'll see. Well, sick yeah. or something and just not, not like yeah. that sort of thing can have an effect on your performance yeah. if you're not comfortable and you're not happy in your surroundings and... You don't have your family and friends around, and you're just not necessarily going to play your best game then. So, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. be fair. How old is he? He's twenty. Imagine yeah, when, young. like, when you're twenty and you go and live away and on your own, you know, and trying to play football. And I, I don't. Know. But these things do come into play. But uh, I don't know. It is a bit of a strange one. I would. I wouldn't be surprised if he does go back in January, though. Yeah. Maybe we can strengthen with the. Uh, you say, like you said, we we are stacked in defence, which we are. But I don't feel like, I don't know. I feel like we need someone, sort of, Norton's level of experience. Think, but uh, we've got Norton and Bennett for experience, but, don't we? I think we have yeah, a lot of defenders. I think we have a lot of defenders, but not the right defenders. Yeah, that that's sense. yeah, that's what I was trying to get yeah, at. Like we I mean. we need someone that has like the experience that we like. You were saying earlier, like, like we need someone to come in that has enough experience that they can do the job straight away and just strengthen us. Um, I don't even know if it's it experience that we need. It's just someone that's comfortable on the ball. And a bit more pace as well. Yeah, I think in terms of like the way that we play as well, so I think I think a swap would be like Cabango could come in for Bennett. Then apart from that, nobody can replace Norton and I don't think anybody can come in and do what Manning does. Yeah, maybe Cooper perhaps for one of them. I think yeah. he did a so decent think, job when he was there earlier in the season. Like we said about like Latabodia as well. I don't. I just don't think he fits in. No the squad. If he's playing him as a right winger, he just doesn't. Work He'd be there him. now if he was confident in him because he's playing two wing backs there. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go, and it gives us the opportunity perhaps to get a more suitable option in potentially. Um, Another rumour then, this one. So Swans have been linked with the Man City's James McAtee. Seen this one doing the rounds on Twitter. I don't really know too much about him, but he's a highly rated teenager. So uh, you heard much about that one? Oh, I've heard about it, yeah. I think everyone on Twitter has posted it. Um, but, uh, I don't yeah, no, I say him. Don't, don't know. Don't know much about him, really. Not sure what. Like what position he plays. Um, but yeah, we'll see. But So, I'll tell you, he's an attacking midfielder who can play 8 or 10. Um, Guardiola actually brought him on as a sub against Wickham at left-back. <laughs> yeah, <I like> <laughs> oh, yeah. Very representative then. Fair enough. I mean... It's Guardiola, though. He likes them to be flexible, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, maybe that's something that we do need. Um, I mean, he's... I 
I'm not sure. He, but he is young. No, he's training with I've, the first I've, team. I've got him Googled here. He's, he's He'd probably 19. be decent. He'd probably be decent coming from Man City's academy. Could, could be worth the risk oh, yeah, well, someone to come uh, off the bench and change the game when we need a bit of a spark. Yeah, but I think that's probably something that maybe we are missing because, like in Cham, like, sometimes he's not. You know, sometimes he's not fit and he goes off after 60 minutes, and then we kind of don't have anybody else. Yeah, yeah. But I think Cullen and when, like, Smith comes on instead. Yeah, and I think yeah. Smith is better mm-hmm. deeper. Yeah. So I think like Cullen yeah. and Whitaker. He probably, he probably doesn't want to like they're not really getting much game time. So if they, they if they're like offloaded in January as well, then we will need like cover in that position. Yeah. So maybe um, like Whitaker out and that and him in on loan. Whitaker out on loan and him in on loan. Yeah, potentially. Um, in the, this is on Wales Online, but I didn't realise this, but apparently there's been rumours floating around that there's a uh, transfer partnership in place um, between. Swansea and Man City, which I wasn't aware of, never heard before. Um, the, whoever's writing this article is playing that down. There's no concrete partnership, but we had Latbodia from there. We had Selena from there. Uh, well, not directly, was it? Um, no, it was actually. We did get Selena from Man City, didn't he? He had a loan at um, Ipswich. I think he was on loan at Ipswich, and then we bought him from yeah, Man City. So we had Selena yeah. from there. We um, and if we have this one now been linked with one or two as well though it didn't come off so perhaps there is like some good connections between the two clubs and that's not necessarily a bad thing now the way that we're playing especially at the moment because if you think about it we didn't yeah. really get many from there under Cooper but we got them from City under Porter Lone. and now again now we're playing passing football again looks like Guardiola perhaps is happy to send his players here Makes sense though because obviously they play the brand of football don't they you're not going to send him on loan to Bad if you, no. so it kind of makes sense that you you know you sort of find you find a place for right. him. So well, you say uh, that, but Liverpool did with Harry Wilson. So yeah, I don't think he touched after the ball, we just it? made them be able to salary and Brewster for like twenty million. Yeah, maybe they would have got the same for Wilson that they sent him to us last year, and he actually scored a couple of goals and probably could have been the difference with us going up potentially. Anyway, <laughs> big big take that. Um, <laughs> another bit of news then so Ben Cabango left out of the Wales squad apparently pulled out or has not agreed to go in due to personal reasons now I'm just curious like I don't, you know, I don't know what the personal reasons are but he hasn't featured in the first team so much for Swansea lately that much he's been on the bench wonder if it's linked to a similar issue or something's going on there yeah, I don't know that's a weird one again he doesn't really get much game time for Wales which is frustrating but he's going to get less when he's not playing for Swansea. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I don't know. It's a bit strange. I, yeah, Cabango's another one. I mean, like the bracket with some of the other players that we spoke about. It's just weird that he's not getting any game time. Yeah, he's going to have to make changes in, um, like the Christmas period. Well, I think he will have to, and he it's always the same, but. We'll see what happens. It'll be interesting. You might even get one or two injuries. Um, so we're going to have to adapt somewhere. See as well, uh, Cabango's brother scored for Cardiff. Did he? Yeah. What, the first team? Uh, no, it's not. not um, obviously, it's not the Blues anymore, is it? But it's, it wasn't for the Blues. It's like for the... Oh, rugby. The, uh, yeah, yeah, rugby. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't... You, you cut over when he said that. I didn't realise he had a brother who played That's rugby, right. to be honest. Uh, nor did I, but he scored a try against Newport on Friday night. Does he uh, look well, like him? Is he like big and? Uh, he, he does look like him, but he's a bit. He's a bit like a bit smaller. He's a winger. He is oh, rapid. Is he? He's got a lovely try. Yeah. So you think if you looked at the two next to each other, you'd think it was the other way around in terms of the one who plays football and the one. Who yeah, plays. yeah, he would. Yeah, maybe they can swap. <laughs> Cabango needs a bit of pace. Oh, okay. Quick question though, right? Regarding the Wales. Obviously, you've got. Uh, is it Mepham? How do you say his oh, name? Yeah, Mepham. Mepham. Mepham, oh, Rodon and Ampadu. I wouldn't put Cabango in over well, maybe only Mepham. Yeah, but I uh, Mepham. Rodon and Ampadu, I wouldn't I wouldn't replace those with Cabango. I don't know if I see but, Ampadu as a centre back though, so That's true. Well, speaking of that though, like Rodon well, the same time. Sorry, that's where Ampadu uh originally started though as a centre back. I thought he was CDM. And then, uh no, and then he moved forward to a CDM. But he started as a centre back. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know. If, like, 
maybe it's a big take here, but I just I don't know. I think he's a bit overrated, to be honest. Uh, no he idea. hasn't really done it when he's gone out on loan, other than uh, one club in Germany. He was a bit poor at Sheffield in the mm. Prem. They yeah. got relegated, so I, I don't really see where he's outperforming some of these other players that have played consistently for their clubs. Um, obviously, I know Rodon's not playing now much for Spurs, but he's got his move to Spurs. We know his quality, and and yeah, Cabango's not playing much now. I'm not saying he's better than Ampadu. He's younger, I believe. Um, Ampadu never broke through to is he? Fair, I think yeah. he'd be about the same age then, or Cabango might be a year older. But I don't think he's going to no, break through Chelsea's first team, is he? Ampadu. I don't know where he is now. Where is he this year? Venetia, it? apparently well, that, he played that, well the other day. He's, yeah, he's been doing um, that says a couple. He's been doing loan moves. He's gone from a loan in the Premier League to Sheffield United, got relegated, and now where is he? Venetia. Well, just says it all to me. Maybe yeah, Roma the other day. Yeah, but I'm not I saying know, he's a bad I, I player. Know, you are just, right. He's no, overrated. Right. Everyone thinks he's this class player. He's just average. He is just average. He's a good look for Wales. He's a good player because the Wales squad is at that level. So for Wales, he's good, but um, he's nothing like you know the level of Ramsey or Bale or you know our stars. I wouldn't say he's in that category at all, just because he's a Chelsea player. He's not going to be a Chelsea player in a couple of years. He's going to be somewhere lower half of the Premier League, higher half of the Championship, somewhere like that. Same as Mefum, same as Cabango. That's what he is for me. That's what I love. Agree. But yeah, um, I'd, I mean, let us know in the comments if you disagree. Maybe that's a bit of a hot take. But yeah, I just I, I just haven't seen... He could put me wrong. I just haven't seen it yet, to be honest. Um, the last bit of news then. Not so much big news as it was maybe yesterday or the day before. But Russell Martin has been linked with the Norwich job. Obviously, Daniel Farker got sacked after they beat Brentford on Saturday. Which... I'll talk about that in a second. But he was installed as second favourite. I think he was 8-1 to one or something at the time. Um, Lampard, Frank Lampard, has been odds on ever since the odds come out. He's been favourite. So there must be something going on there. Maybe talks or whatever. But I had people messaging me like Cardiff fan and work like, oh my God, he's been linked. Do you think he's going to go with this, that, or the other? I just don't. I just can't see it. I think the only reason he's on that list, it happens to us all the time, pass player. He's a past player from Norwich, who's now a manager. We get that all the time. Even like when the manager gets sacked, sometimes you scroll down far enough and Roberto Martinez and Brendan Rodgers are there and you just know they ain't coming. Um, yeah. Gary Monk is usually yeah. there somewhere near the top for the first couple of days and then he goes down. Um, I just think, yeah, he obviously had a decent start, but I just can't see Russell Martin leaving now. He's only been in this job like three, four months. Um, and the other thing, the fact that Norwich sacked Farker basically as soon as the game finished, when they just beat Brentford, says to me they'd already made that decision before kickoff, um, and we're going into an international break. So it was obviously pre-planned in my it. view because it didn't yeah. matter what the result was. They won the game and then they sacked him. So I think they've already nearly got someone lined up. They know they got a bit of a break now for this guy to come in and have a bit more time with the squad before their next match. So I think that was a pre-planned move, and they must have they must have someone in mind. And the fact that Lampard is such low odds, maybe it's going to be him. At the time of recording, obviously there's been no announcement of who their boss is, but it might not be Lampard. I just don't think it will be Russell Martin, and he has now moved down to eighteen to one in the um, betting. So, you're right. I, I don't think see yeah. Martin. Yeah. Do you used to I don't play for him. It was an obvious sort of choice, isn't it? To yeah. I mean, there's one of the favourites, but I right, make can you imagine? Ah, right, wow, be devastated. I don't know what we would do in that, in that situation. Oh, yeah. I just, yeah. Kurt is back in. <laughs> He's retired, manager. isn't he? <laughs> yeah, I know. But, yeah, yeah, I I, but, but, but again, it's just going to be the same scenario all the time. Anytime someone gets sacked, the Swans manager is linked. <laughs> that, it's the same for the last... Uh, Four years. Since we've been relegated. You wait till uh, Potter goes somewhere from Brighton now. This is, this is the way I, I, I screamed about this last year and it just stood my head in. Like every job that came up, even when we had Cooper, obviously a different style of football, but it was linked with every job that came up. Going every on hindsight now, though. Going on hindsight now, maybe Cooper's agent was doing that because he obviously wanted to go. Yeah. And but. like, no, nobody nobody else seems to get linked. Like, you've got. Um, 
Yeah, never seen Farka link Thomas for a job. But Thomas Frank for years was 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 they hailed him for Brentford. Obviously, he was a good manager in the championship. He was never linked to another job, even close. No. And every Swans manager, just yeah. a, like any job that comes up now, they link to move away. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just the way the club is run, and they're able to do it with less resources than other clubs, and the way they play football makes sense. But yeah, it does just really does my head in. Yeah, it is a bit annoying. Honestly, like if if like. Martin's trajectory goes the way it is going. Can you see him being here more than two years? No. Not unless we go up. Yeah. But if he's not taking this summer, years? he has to go up next year or he's gone. Not sacked gone. But someone will take him. I think I think if this was in the summer, Farker got sacked, I think it'd be a different story. If he'd had a year with us and we'd done well. I think you'd come and then Norwich would come down to the championship without a manager. I think it might be it would have been story. an interesting one whether he would go for somewhere he's played before or whether you would like to continue a project oh, that he started. I'm not sure though. Would he? Like, yeah, that's that's the thing. Like with the way, you know, he he's he's made in dents and like what well, inroads. Like yeah, but we've been burned before, Ali. Just so think of Martin. Oh, yeah. how, long, how, how long was he at? Uh, how long was he at uh, MK Dons? Wasn't that how long was he? Well, yeah, but one and a half years. Swans so. over over the Dons. It that's just a, that's a real uh... upper league, in it? If Norwich came down in the same league, you'd think he'd go in there because decent money and past allegiances. But if uh, I just had a real shock thought as well, you say about Brighton. If Potter goes somewhere, he's from Brighton, isn't he? Russell Martin. He lives in Brighton, I think. <laughs> Called the just, just 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 putting that out there. That's they don't want to continue the Potter way of playing, and oh well, it worked. It worked last time we took someone from Swansea. Oh, local lad as well, bargain. <laughs> yeah, let's not think about not. that. Let's hope Potter never. Cheerful. Yeah. Cheerful. Um, keep keep Brighton at the top of the league, Potter. Yeah, well, no, that's going to make him get snapped up by someone. Well, it needs to go mid table. On that. Uh, Managers though, bloody hell! It was Lord Sack this week. Farco went. Smith went from Warnock. Villa. Warnock from Middlesbrough. They replaced him already. Yeah. Isn't it? It's Wilder. Yeah, I think. Um, I think they jumped the gun, Middlesbrough. I think. I think maybe Cardiff were looking at Wilder. Oh, who else got sacked? Someone else in the championship. Oh, uh, not sure. Or, or no, Norwich maybe Norwich and, and Villa. But I think Wilder was in the mix, so I think they got rid of. Um, uh, Warnock and brought Wilder in before anybody else did. I don't know if Cardiff could have afforded him. No, I think they wouldn't have afforded him, but I, afforded him. But I think he probably thought maybe they were on the edge of, of maybe Someone getting rid else of Warnock. Him they thought yeah. we've got to do it now because we want Wilder because he they sacked him on the Saturday after the game and Wilder was in on Sunday morning. I don't even think Middlesbrough done that bad. Like two wins in the last five and a draw and then two losses, but. They're one point behind. They're not us. even that bad. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're that well. They're in fourteen. Well, right? they were challenging playoffs, and they looked like they're slipping back to mid table, which is perhaps what happened last year as well. So perhaps they're just like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Needs to do better, yeah. but could have jumped the gun. Yeah. Did Warnock get fired, or did he leave? Got fired, I think. Hmm. Well, if you bring in, a, they brought a manager in well quick, so he must have been fired. You don't leave and then replace him that quick. Yeah. Anyway, looking at the table, it's Bournemouth are now top on forty points, uh, followed by Fulham thirty eight. So they look like looks like a two horse race, perhaps for the league. Early days to say it, but there's an eight point gap separating Bournemouth and West Brom in third. Um, it just seems to be opening up week by week at the moment. Looking at the goal score as well, those two are leagues ahead of the rest of the league. Uh, Swansea yeah. are in twelfth position. 23 points. We are currently three points off QPR in sixth place. So it's only a win away from the playoffs still. Had we have beaten Bournemouth yesterday, depending on the goal difference, probably would have been in there, but um, we didn't, so we're not in there. But yeah, uh, no, other we're interesting... Also, Go on. Sorry, I was going to say, also three points off like 18th. Who we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, no, that's four, ridiculous four points, how close it is. Four points you know? off 18th. Uh, two points, two points off seventeenth. 
I was discussing this last week actually with a friend. It's crazy the fact that, you know, there is what, four points between 16th and 6th. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and got, that, like, that is just ridiculous. The bottom team How close it is. looking like getting adrift, but Hull picked up a win. Barnsley picked up a win. They were playing each other, weren't they, as well? So Hull actually beat Barnsley, which is a bit of a kicker for Barnsley. Cardiff picked up a win. They were in the relegation zone at one point last weekend, but they came back from 1-0 down against Huddersfield and basically scored in the, with the last header of the game. I was going to say kick of the game, but scored two headers again. <laughs> um, it's an interesting start with Cardiff as well. They have not scored a goal in the first half all season. Good start. Uh, Peterborough. How many have they conceded in the first half? I don't know. I don't know that far. <laughs> I just get bits of information sometimes from my mate in work who's a Cardiff fan when he has a little bit of a rant and moan. But yeah, that's one of the things he said. Yeah. Yeah, he told me not to discuss the swans in work. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, I don't listen to him. It's fine. I just started seeing Cardiff get better. <laughs> yeah, I bet yeah, you have that. Uh, they, they're on big changes at the moment. I think all their high earners from the Premier League are out of contract at the end of this summer. Keith and be gone as well. So I think, yeah, they are bringing some young players through now. I into, good I think for Wales, got... that is, and about time they started doing that, to be fair. Yeah. They've got a good couple of youngsters that came on. I think someone came on and assisted both the Keith and Moore goals, a young Welsh player. I can't remember his name. But um, have they been forced into it because they have no money? Yeah, it's not, not looking great for them, is it? Financially, although I think there's some positive news in that. The Salah saga, I think they convicted someone, didn't they, in the end, and maybe that's going to be a lifeline in terms of them not paying the fee, as far as being told, but I don't know the ins and outs and details of that, but yeah, that's still drawing on for them, which is probably part of the problem, because they probably can't spend money just in yeah. case they need to give it uh, for this uh, case. But yeah, the, look yeah. Another, just look another Cardiff game, you're saying um, but the assists I, Davis... Uh, yeah. Try to see who. Isaac Davis. Isaac Davis, yeah, that's the one. Young Welsh lad, is he? Yeah, 20 years old. Be, yeah. be good for Wales. Yeah. But uh, on, the, on the table, though, I don't know. That that one, that pack in the middle won't break up until probably Christmas time. January time, you probably might see gaps opening up there, but tight at the moment. I think Fulham and. I think it's always quite tight in the middle of the Championship, Fulham. isn't it? You always get someone that steamrolls yeah. their way up towards the end as well. Sneaks into yeah. like Barnsley last well, year, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah, back door team. Fulham, yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. Fulham, Fulham and Bournemouth are gone. Though. Can we can we talk about like Fulham one seven nil in the week? Way to Blackburn, it's ridiculous. And Mitrovic has the last twenty goals. Yeah, did we? Yeah, we did a bit later last week, didn't we? After the midweek games. Ah, uh, yeah. M- Mitrovic has twenty goals. <laughs> he twenty again, league he? goals. He scored again. He scored the goal for them, didn't he? Like, against. Uh, Whoever the people he's, he's got a hat trick again against West Brom. So twenty fair. league goals and it's November. That's ridiculous. What ah, yeah. Was it Mitrovic score? Yeah, it was Mitrovic but scored against Peter Brown. Can yes. Mitrovic do it in the Prem? I swear we've discussed this he before. He hasn't consistently done it enough in the Prem, no. But <laughs> He's always been in teams that are fighting relegation, yeah. so maybe you're not judging it for the best. I'm sure he could do it if he had a you know if a consistent team. If he was in like a a Newcastle right now, I know he was there before, but if they had him now, perhaps so. Burnley, yeah. Burnley might be a good one for him. Twenty goals in November. I, yeah, we need to sign off on that. I don't know whether um, he's got the discipline to play under Sean Dyche, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but yeah, we can no. sign off on that. It's been it's been a, yeah. a good one, been a long one. Um, I didn't think we talked for that long because there's no games, only one game, and nothing to look forward to next week. But we'll try and get something out next week. Otherwise, see what happens if we do have a week off. Then be back the week after. But I'm hoping we'll get something sorted. So on that note, um, as always, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed. Let us know in the comments about everything we said. If you agree with us, if you disagree, if you think we're talking rubbish, let us know. And don't forget to leave a like on the video as well. That helps more people see our stuff, helps us grow as a channel. And the more we grow, the more better stuff we can put out going forward um, and improve the quality of the content. So thank you, everyone, for the support so far. 
don't forget to check out our social medias twitter facebook instagram uh basically type in swans cast or swans cast media and you'll find us twitter is our most active um and yeah check us well use our code for fan hub as well if you want to predict uh your team every week with us and you get a chance of winning some free tickets as well if you come top of the fan leaderboard every month so it's always good to get involved there for free so um on that note, cheers Lee, cheers Alid for coming, and we shall see you in the next ones. Thank you. Cheers. See you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Don't forget if you enjoyed the video to click the like button to help us grow. To keep up to date with all of our new uploads, hit the subscribe button and push the bell to ensure you are notified of all of our new videos. As always, engage in the comments and let us know your opinions on what we discussed today. And if you want to support us directly, check out our new merch where you can find some awesome sponsor-related t-shirts.